Welcome to our time of worship. This time of year in the lectionary is called Ordinary Time. It's the long summer period between the major Christian festivals. This year I thought we ought to rename it Extraordinary Time. We hope you are well and safe. Let us prepare ourselves for worship. Comfort us, Lord, with the awareness of your presence in mountaintop experiences. With the awareness of your presence in the middle of this Covid crisis. With the awareness of your presence as new opportunities unfold for us. With the awareness of your presence and the ordinariness of life with the awareness of your presence, here and now. The first hymn I've chosen today is Awake, Awake to Love and Work. We continue with a prayer. Awake, awake to love and work, the lark is in the sky. We begin this day with you, Lord. We are thankful for your everlasting presence and the reassurance that you are with us now and always. The world we thought we knew has changed, is still changing. And we sometimes longingly cling to what is past, that settled life with a familiar pattern. The only thing we are sure of now is uncertainty and not knowing what the future holds. The challenge of change is exposing us to things we do not know or have not previously experienced. Walk with us this day and in the days to come, as we step out into an uncertain future in our personal lives and in our communal life as a church. One of Pratt Green's hymns begins with these words. The Church of Christ in every age, beset by change but spirit-led, must claim and test its heritage and keep on rising from the dead. Help us, Lord, 
should prepare for the future in our minds and our hearts. Let us dream dreams and respond to visions of a future which may be different. Amen. This week we continue with Matthew's Gospel, which is the focus of the lectionary this year. It begins at the end of chapter 9 and continues into the next chapter. It begins with a passage entitled, The Need for Workers, and chapter 10 begins with the commission of the Twelve Apostles and the instructions Jesus gives them. The Need for Workers Jesus travelled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogue and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his field. Jesus sends out the twelve apostles. Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave them the authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. Here are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also called Peter. Then Andrew, Peter's brother. James, son of Zebedee. John, James's brother. Philip, Bartholomew. Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus. Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot. And Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. Jesus sent out the twelve apostles with these instructions. Don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but only to the people of Israel, God's lost sheep. Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. Don't take any money in your money belts. No gold, silver or even copper coins. Don't carry a traveller's bag with a change of clothes and sandals or even a walking stick. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality because those who work deserve to be fed. Whenever you enter a city or village, search for a worthy person and stay in his home until you leave town. When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be a worthy home, let your blessing stand. If it is not, take back the blessing. If any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake its dust from your feet as you leave. I tell you the truth. The wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on the judgment day. Look, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves, so be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. But beware, for you will be handed over to the courts and will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and other unbelievers about me. When you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking. It will be the spirit of your Father speaking through you. Amen. Thanks be to God for the reading of his word. So, awake, awake to love and work, a lark is in the sky. I have no difficulty getting up on a fine summer morning and starting a new day. We've had plenty of those in recent weeks. 
There's no difficulty getting up when there's a job to get on with, whether it's paid work or not. The pandemic we are experiencing has had a massive impact on work and workers. NHS staff have been at the forefront, working to treat people and save lives. They've never had to work in such a focused and demanding way. Some people have been able to work from home and many continue to do so with benefits for them and the wider community. Some have continued working pretty much as normal. Shop workers, policemen, refuse collectors. Some people have been furloughed in the hope that the same job will be available for them later. Unfortunately, some have been made redundant or have been threatened with redundancy, particularly in the aviation and the travel sectors. Many people have found alternative work as volunteers or responding to changing needs and demands, such as the production of PPE. And finally, some are warning that there will not be enough workers to pick the harvest this summer and autumn and are hoping to recruit more in time for this seasonal work. Well, that gives me a useful link into the passage in the lectionary today from Matthew's chapter 9 and 10. In the Bible I used for preparing this service, it began with the subtitle, The Need for Workers. Jesus' ministry was already well established. Matthew has already recorded collections of his teachings in the Sermon on the Mount. There are several healing stories in chapters 8 and 9. Peter's mother-in-law, sick with a fever, two blind men, a paralysed man, the healing of the synagogue leader's daughter. Jesus was in high demand. He was attracting crowds of people coming for help. So here at the end of chapter 9 it says, Jesus travelled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and he healed every kind of disease and illness. But he'd also become aware that the people had other needs, spiritual needs. Verse 36 says, He had compassion on the crowds because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. This is followed by verse 37 where we read, The harvest is great. But the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into his fields. So ends chapter 9. And the next chapter begins with the commission of the twelve apostles. Jesus has realised or admitted that he will not be able to do it by himself. He realises his human limitations. He cannot travel all over the world. And how much of the world did he know existed? Or how much of the world which existed did he know? He knew he would die one day. And in some gospel passages, particularly John, he talks openly about his suffering and his death. So Jesus is ready to include others in the work and mission and he wants them to be able to operate in the same way as he does. There is not much scriptural evidence to say that this happened in any extensive way before his death and resurrection. But after the Pentecost they certainly became active and fulfilled the commission imparted on them. Much of what Jesus says or is reported to have said in the commissioning of his disciples, may strictly be only relevant to the period of time Jesus was operating in. Travel lightly, fitted in with his radical, itinerant ministry. No wallet, no credit cards, no debit cards, no loose cash. Rely on generous hospitality. 
It seems strange that Jesus should have narrowed his mission down to the Jews. This sounds very unlike Jesus. And even the early church, considering the Gospels were written 30 to 40 years after his death. This may be writer's license, or the fact that Matthew was a Jew and operated a church of his own, possibly in Antioch. However, you will remember the Great Commission at the end of this same Gospel. Go and make disciples of all nations. We occasionally sing Hugh Sherlock's hymn 410, Lord your church on earth is seeking. And the first verse includes these words. We would heed your great commission, sending us to every place, preach, baptise, fulfil my mission, serve with love and share my grace. It also ends in a similar vein. In all lands and with all races, let us serve and seek to bring all the world to render praises, Christ to you, Redeemer, King. In this time of lockdown, churches have been closed, doors locked, notices displayed explaining that no way can we let you in, even with a membership ticket. After two or three weeks of lockdown, we had a rethink about the notices that Tor Gable had displayed, which we felt gave the wrong impression. The church was still operating, still active, still worshipping. The Methodist Church had produced some posters with a more positive edge, which we copied. We asked Ruth Hutchinson to design some posters to advertise that we were still active in worship, prayer and witness. We have continued to operate the fair trade shop and are selling over £200 a month. During Christian Aid Week we raised nearly £1,000 which came from all of our circuit churches. Pastoral work continues in different forms, in organised ways and in more informal ways. So we are still church, still active, still praying still worshipping. The Church, both Methodist and URC, have produced some material for us to consider, reflect and think about. Before we reopen and launch into all the same things we did before, they suggest we consider how we've continued without the building and what elements of this way of operating could we continue to develop. So consider the ways we have provided opportunities to worship and rather than slip back into our normal worship pattern, can we make different or additional provisions? So this could be a once in a lifetime opportunity to, re to reconsider what we need the buildings for. For several years the groups who make use of Togable premises have kept us afloat financially but all these groups will not automatically return after we are able to start using the premises again. The practical limitations imposed by the virus may continue for some time and make some groups inoperable. And the demographic profile of several of the groups will also influence decisions about their future. So will we continue to be financially viable and for how long? Peter's promised that after his sabbatical one of his tasks will be to go around the churches in the circuit and to ask each one of us to consider what is our mission and purpose? What is the church here in Beverly to do in 2020? So while we're still in lockdown and the churches are operating in a different way, please take this opportunity to reflect on what you think it is important we continue and what we consider what we could consider stopping doing and perhaps what new initiatives might we try. As well as reading through this passage in Matthew again you might consider looking through the mission and evangelism section of our hymn book. It begins at 401 and there are 18 hymns. 
The other thing you may like to consider is how much of that list, the things the church is here to do, need a building. We have now managed for three months without, and there may be a few more weeks and months yet to come. So can we throw away the keys yet? After the district event last October, which was called Flourish, we were given a pack of sunflower seeds. So I hope Yorkshire this year is going to be full of sunflowers. We've enjoyed watching ours germinate and start to grow, and we're looking forward to our first flowers coming soon. Mission is all about planting seeds and nurturing them. What is the mission of your church, our church? Will it be the same as before lockdown or will it have new dimensions added to it? One of Richard Jones's hymns contains these two lines. Explore our visions Pray for more, since God delights to meet fresh needs. So, happy planting, happy dreaming. Amen. So now we continue with a prayerful reflection, continuing with the gardening theme. Let's think about the church as a garden for a moment. Many of you will have had more time to spend looking after your garden in recent weeks and I hope your garden is showing the benefit. Ours certainly is. When seeds are planted we dream of the harvest, the blossom, the colour to come. But plants need watering, tending, protecting and that takes time and patience to watch them grow. What seeds are we planting as church? And have we patience to see them grow and develop? What seeds are we hoping to plant when our church is able to reopen? And will we have patience to watch them grow and develop? Let us commit ourselves to the task of gardening, that we may become a fruitful community. Our prayers for others will mostly focus on workers. There is a response when I use the words, Lord, in your mercy, can you respond, hear our prayer. We give thanks, O oh God, for all those who work on our behalf, providing our daily needs. For shop workers, council workers, the banks and medical staff. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in the NHS who have had to work so hard in treating and caring for those with the disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for workers who are furloughed in the hope that they will have a job to return to. And we include all our church workers in this prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for business owners and leaders, wondering if their business will survive this crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have lost their jobs or wondering if they are next in line. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for charities and their volunteers and the impact this crisis has had on their activities.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church when it emerges from this lockdown, for our hopes and expectations, and the opportunities this will provide for us to reflect on what our mission to Beverley and the wider world is. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a short time of quiet when you can say your own prayers for things you are particularly concerned about. We bring our prayers together as we share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And now we sing the hymn, Forth in Thy Name, O Lord, I Go. It's 550 if you're using Singing the Faith. And a final blessing. Lord, in a world where bad news dominates good, your gospel offers only good news, not just for some, but for all. Not just for a few moments, but for a lifetime. Not just for here and now, but for everywhere. Give us that strength of faith to be your ambassadors of your life-giving gospel and share it with all we meet.